this, but it's G2. Um, and then, well, I'd also like to be able to predict Origins draft. The thing is, Nuketic has played eight different mid laners across nine games, only having two Yasuo games. And they've actually got a pretty deep champion pool themselves. They're willing to play a bunch of creative stuff. We've seen things like Kane coming out from Cold. We saw Elise coming out from uh, Yankos yesterday. So it's difficult to assess what they really put high priority on. The only things that we've seen really be consistent for the side of Origin is that Mithy likes to play Alistair. And when he can't get his hands on Alistair, he often goes towards the Morgana. Yep. So uh, we'll see if that becomes a high priority, given that Thresh and Braum seem to be the go-to supports on currently on patch 9.3. I've seen Mithy play uh, a single game of Braum so far, one on it, so shouldn't be too out of his Ooh, wheelhouse. But still lock with the Cassio first there. First Cassio here from G2. So remember, this could still go bot lane, could still be played mid. She has had a bunch of nerfs. One of the reasons why she kind of fell out of favor in the bot lane is because of the Miasma nerfs that happened. Uh, they lost a lot of damage. The cost increase went up as well. Um, so now mid laners, if they're going to play it, they much prefer the mid lane where you can just funnel all those extra resources into her, get her to that late game or the, the item spike that she kind of wants. Ooh, okay. Uh, it's going to be a Karthus here locked in for cold, you would assume, alongside the Ezreal. So unless they decide to put the Karthus into the Cassio, because I have seen that a couple times. Okay. You can farm fairly safely from range. Uh, and while, like, if you ever land a Maz or a Q onto the Karthus, you can just kind of melt through him. Uh, it actually sits up really nicely, because remember, she doesn't have boots, which means that landing the, the Wall of Pain uh, yeah. is really, really easy from the side of Karthus. So just want to throw that out there. Potentially played in the mid lane, uh, but yes, you would expect it. Ha! And there is the Shaco Hover. The reason yeah. why that's happening is because Dracos did an interview uh, where he said, if G2 play Shaco mid and win with it, what will we be able to do? Uh, so a bit of a troll uh, there from Caps. Oh, there is a Silas possibility here, though. You're looking at Ezra, you're looking at Karthus. Silas locked in. And like, if anyone's gonna get it. If you know, anyone's gonna in get Europe, it. Silas hasn't won a game yet. Yes, but Caps hasn't played it yet. So you're now, you're like in that weird quandary, right? Where it's like a paradox. A champion can never win in Europe, but now you've got one of the teams that has yeah. never lost a game. So what will happen? We'll find out. On the next episode. Oh, yeah. So, uh, no, wait. Um, so yeah, the, the Silas, uh, I think it's, I don't know what G2's draft looks like right now. I don't even know where these champions are being played. For all I know, this is a pike mid lane. It's uh, kind so of greeny blue, I think. Whereas on the other the side, it's more purpley blue. Yeah. It's the big difference. So the, the cannon are. pick is easy to talk about. That's very likely going to go onto Alfari. It's a champion that he's played a lot of this split. Uh, with the Jace band away and the Urgot band away, Cannon just becomes like the next most powerful top laner. Um, yeah. But well, he's going to struggle against it. something like a Casio, so I th <laughs> I don't know, man. We'll, we'll just we'll talk about the bands as they come through. I think we can do that. There's a Jarvan ban as well coming out from Origin. Uh, next phase, what have we still got? So, still th got things like the Scion. Uh, looks like LeBlanc's going to be banned out in the mid lane. Other possibilities here. I'm looking at AD carries maybe for G2, but you could be taking that Cassio down towards the bottom lane. A little bit of a kill lane with the pike. Uh, it looks like right now Origin just want to ban away potential top laners that they expect Wonder to go on to. I think Jarvan's a good ban because he can just farm from a distance. He can play relatively safe. He has good escape options against the cannon as well. Um, Is there anything else that you ban against the cannon? <laughs> No, not no. really. I think that he does pretty well against most of the other meta stuff that you could potentially run up there. Uh, Scion would be the only other extreme, but like he does really well in Scion, so I don't think you have to be worried about that. They're actually just going to go for another early game jungler ban. This, what does this suggest? Because I mean, you're kind of assuming that the cast is in the jungle and they're taking away some of the early game junglers that are very prevalent. Yeah. But Lee Sin is obviously still up and available. Uh, should G2 want to go in that? Elise is another one that is available yeah. as well. So, but maybe Origin is saying, you know what? We want to bait the Elise pick out because the Karthus actually isn't in the jungle. He's in the mid, haha. -ha, and then we'll pick something good that's into the Elise. Uh, I don't know. This this draft is a very difficult one to call. Yeah. I, I, I want to ask just a question about drafting strategy here for Origin rather than about the specifics. When you know there's a Silas on the enemy team and you have locked in, you know, three pretty impactful ultimates already. Does it change the next sets of ultimates, the next sets of champions that you lock in? Do you actually care too much about which, which ults the Silas can I don't think you can afford to, because I think you just kind of have to build a composition that best allows you to win the game. Uh, and unfortunately, if that means that Silas has a bunch of ults that he can steal, then that's just a situation you're going to have yeah. to deal with. But 
what Origin is saying here is, you know what? We actually have a pretty solid team fight composition right now. We want a little bit more engage. So we're going to go for the Rakan down towards the bot lane. And again, the only thing we know pretty confidently is that the Kennen is in the top lane. We still don't know whether the Karthus is going in mid or in the jungle. But it looks like the composition's round out a little bit more for G2. The big question mark is, do they put Cassio top or do they put it mid? Yeah. And I would say that if they want to play into the Kennen, then you would put the Cassio into the Cannon and you would keep the Silas in the mid lane. Which means that if you're Origin right now, I would want to put uh, the Karthus in the jungle and then I would want to pick a winning matchup from the side of Origin. Maybe a little bit more AD damage! Oh! And was... You got there. I was just, just a little too late. I was like, what an exciting drop this is as well. You've got the Zed, you have the Rakan, Karthus, Cannon, Ezreal. That seems so powerful to me. Uh, but there's a Zed, mate. Uh, give me a second. Uh, so okay, do you always keep talking. You think about no, the no, Zed. no. Because uh, funnily enough, I actually would have said Nocturne here, but uh, <laughs> I legitimately think it's a good pick into it. But uh, the thing about Zed is you you always have to think about what ultimates can potentially be stolen. And uh, just so you guys can't see the timer on your screen, but currently at 24, at about 20 seconds, you have to lock in 21. 20, the positions are locked in. So it will be Wonder playing Silas up in the top lane. They do not want him playing. They do not want to have the Silas into the uh, Zed matchup. And they're actually going to put Cassio into it. So I think G2 are pretty happy with the mid lane matchup, but Silas will struggle a little bit against, against Cannon. Fortunately, he's pretty mobile with his E gap closer, and then he has the W as well to get that sustained. So in terms of skirmishing, uh, Silas should be able to hold his own, but you know, he does get outranged, he will get poked a lot, so I think he will struggle in terms of the early levels. We'll see, we'll keep track of it as the game progresses, but we have a Zed. We had yeah. a Pantheon earlier, we've now got a Zed coming out from Duke Duck that is a completely new champion, once again. He's now at nine champions in ten games. Nuke Duck, he does this every year, man. Champion Ocean. So, do you want to know the last time Nuke Duck played Zed? When was the last time? 2018 Summer. Do you want to know who he played against? Was it Caps? G2. Oh, it was against G2. Against Perk. So now, we'll see if... Uh, didn't he lose that game? I didn't get that bit of information fed into my ear. <laughs> so <laughs> I will wait until I've got it fed into my ear and then I'll take it. It's going to be an exciting game. You have to feel. Silas, Zed, Cassio, Kennen, all of these on Summoner's Rift. I want to talk about what the compositions want to do, though, Venice, because we've been so distracted by the picks. I haven't really decided yet what either. OG or G2 want to do this game? So they're not very conventional picks. Uh, and what I can say about the compositions is both are very squishy. Now, some Silas's do go relatively tanky. Some I've seen go for Iceborne Gauntlet, but I imagine Wonder's probably just going to go full AP. Uh, we'll keep track of that. But both compositions are very, very squishy and deal a lot of damage. Now, speaking of damage, Wonder already looking to get a bit onto Niffy. Cavs get someone as well with the Noxious Blast. Is the Cassio mid lane? And Patrick will answer. Didn't get a pot of gold from the Kleptomancy, so that's a shame for him. Uh, Nuke Duck did win that game against G2 playing for oh. Schalke, so... It was against Yasuo too, I think. Quite possibly. My memory serves me correctly. So both teams are very squishy, Betty. Yes. Both teams have slightly unconventional picks. Origin. Um, scaling is definitely in favor of G2, I would argue, just because Cassio Severe, uh, not only is it really good at Baron, but also just in team fights, it's really strong. Uh, the only counterpoint to that is Karthus and Kennen. Like game team fights, sure, they're certainly strong, but like I think Zed gets really difficult to play, especially against the Sivir, because you can spell shield his ultimate. You definitely can. Um, and then Ezreal, like, sure, it's not like he has a weak late game, right? Especially with the, the double tier build that we often see, but against the Sivir, her, her AoE damage in team fights is just ridiculous. So I definitely think that scaling is on the side of G2, but they've never really relied on scaling. No. They've often been very early game focused. We saw all the stats about how dominant they are. They're on track to be the most dominant team in European history, period. Um, and Yankus is on early game jungler, and he has lanes to play around because of how squishy the entire composition of Origin is. So. Um, yeah, I think I'm expecting a bit of a bloodbath. Uh, and it's definitely not going to come from cold. He's much more in the let's farm the jungle, let's uh, let's wait a little bit. There's always the possibility for counter ganks as Karthus. We actually saw Xerxe on his first game on Karthus th this split have an incredible performance. I think it was 4 0 4 relatively early on in that game just because he kept finding counter gank after counter gank. But yesterday, cold had a pretty good number on his opposing jungle. I'll have to see if he can maintain that today. We haven't talked a huge amount about the Rakan pick. Of course, still the nerfed Rakan which is always a bugbear for me uh, because I love good Rakan and this is bad Rakan, but still does have that teamfight influence that you would like. So 
it's funny that we have a Zed in this game because Rakan reminds me a lot of uh, the nerf to Zed that came through. Mm -hmm. Do you remember a long time ago uh, what happened to Zed's shadow? It, you were it, slower to activate it. Yeah. yeah. And they kind of did the same thing to Rakan's W. Yeah. And I thought to myself, like, yeah, and people still play Zed. I'm like, no, they no, don't. They don't. <laughs> no one plays Zed. That nerf pretty much took him out of pro play. I, I, and then I, I was I like, rode oh. Rata Rakan's <laughs> coattails to Diamond 2, and now I can't get out of Plat 2. I think that's that shows okay. something. You'll find a new champion soon, my friend. I tried to play Nocturne mid today. We had that a show a match, me against Trevor. Yeah. I played Nocturne mid, he played Corky. Yeah. I killed him early on, yeah. and then I kept dying quite a lot. To him? Yeah. Oh. Oh, and the Hecarim. <laughs> okay. But Trevor will say it was just the Corky. You do pretty well into Corky, though. Because I his Valkyrie not. his Valkyrie doesn't get out of range of your tether, which means that if you land Q and E, he can't actually escape the fear. Uh, unlike someone like an Ezreal, who okay. can actually jump out of the fear. Because his Valkyrie seems to get away from my tether quite a lot of the yeah, time. Yeah, but the point is that because you get the bonus movement speed from your Q, you so can I actually So I played it wrong, close. is what we're saying. Yeah. Okay, that's that makes a lot of sense. Uh, Alpha is just fixing an issue with his map, so we should be back in So that's why we're just talking about Nocturne versus Corky matchup. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Zed versus Cassio matchup. Let's because do it. it's not a matchup that many people commonly see. Mm -hmm. If you've ever played it in solo queue, you'll know that Cassio is really obnoxious to deal with. Yep. Every time you try to last hit the minion, Cassio hits you with an obnoxious blast. Um, you will start with a long sword and three pots to just have that bit of sustainability. But basically, your whole goal in that matchup will be to try and last hit with the Q. Um, the matchup does have potential to get better at around level six. The problem is when Nuketuk tries to go for an all-in, uh, Caps knows where he yeah. will land with the ultimate. Shadow so, always spawns behind you. Yes, yeah, so you can then point your ultimate in that direction and it increases your likelihood of securing the uh, the stun. Obviously, Nuketuk can click the other way and try and turn around. Um, it's about whether or not he can actually pull it off or not. Yeah. So uh, it's it's very difficult to kill a Cassio, basically. Uh, the only advantage that Nuketuk has is that with three shadows up, he has a decent amount of mobility. So there is, once if you dodge a single Noxious Blast, a lot of the damage in the early game just disappears from the Cassio. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially with the Q-Max Cassio that we've seen a yeah. lot most recently, right? So this is the, the thing, like, it can be a bit of a skill matchup, but definitely early levels, Nuke Duck is forced to play very defensively. He's just going to have to farm as best as he can. Uh, but it's definitely not going to be an easy one. And so. need to avoid ganks from Yankos as well, because if they don't keep control of the vision around there, Origin might see that Zed falling foul to some early jungle pressure from Yankos, who yesterday showed us just how effective he can be in the early game. Yep, definitely true. So we are back in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for bearing with us. Uh, just into a bit of pushing action down the bot lane. At least now, if they ever want to play uh, Nocturne into Corky, they know exactly how to play that matchup. Yeah. We're out of it again, but we'll be back in in a second, hopefully. We'll have to find out exactly uh, what is happening. Vedius. It looks like Afari still has the same issue. Okay, well, that so. makes sense. Well, I, how much do you know about Silas in the top lane? It's Kennen. How much do you know about this matchup? How much do you think you can break down in the moment? Because we've done the mid lane. What, Silas versus Kennen? I care about Kennen? Silas Kennen, because you said in Pick and Ban, you were like, you know, I'd probably take the Cassio into the Kennen to keep the Silas mid against whatever's picked. And then G2 decided, oh, we've seen the Zed. We're going to take Cassio into Zed and put the Silas into a cannon so match. The thing about... So, because we have a pause. Yeah, that, that's about, why we've got a yeah, bit of time. No, no, that's no, why but, I'm breaking but it down I, for you. So I wouldn't normally talk about this in a game because it's really long-winded, but because we have the time. Um, Wait, do I have to listen to you for longer? Then? Yes, you uh, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is this effect called the... I, I used to call it the victor effect, right? But it's basically the effect of uh, champions that have not seen a lot of play... Uh, you don't have the same level of experience against, right? That's understandable. Which means that even in matchups that on paper should go one way, sometimes you're a little afraid to kind of push that, or maybe you, you don't want to try and exert as much pressure as you typically would because you're not as familiar with the champion as you used to be. Uh, so the one thing I will say about Silas is because he's banned a lot, and I imagine in scrims, the fact that he's banned pretty much all the time means you probably don't get to play against him that much either. Um, so I think that right now, Alfari, even though he has a range advantage, he's just showing a bit of extra respect towards Alfari, yeah. uh, sorry, Wanda, just because there is that potential for the um, the unknown factor about the champion. Now, the other thing is, uh, the thing about Silas is typically you start with the E first, which is your dash into yep. the stun. Abscond, abduct. Yeah, and that gives you a shield, which means you can mitigate some of the poke that comes out from Alfari and even threaten to actually jump on top of him and trade. Mm -hmm. And because what many cannons do is actually start with the E as the level one skill for that Lightning extra rush. bit of mobility, that also gives you some bonus stats as well. Um, you can't actually trade that aggressive. Once you get level two, level three, so you've got the points in your W and your Q, that's when you can look to trade back a 
little bit more. Um, but it looks like for the early game, because Wonder was able to get that early push off, he probably went for a bit of an early uh, aggressive trade with his mm -hmm. E into the E. Um, that's why right now Alfari is playing on the back for a little bit. But judging by how the current state looks like in the top lane, he's sitting on an extra pot. He also has a red pot. And I imagine that when the wave starts to bounce back, you'll see that the wave should go slightly more in favor of Alfari. And Alfari has gone for the Kleptomancy cannon in that top lane as well. Yesterday, we saw some phase wash cannon to try and avoid ganks a little bit more, to try and avoid those prolonged trades. Here, Kleptomancy into Grasp of the Undying coming out from Wonder. There has been a bit of debate with Silas's what the best keystone to take is. I've heard a little bit about Aftershock. I've heard a little bit about Grasp. I guess if you're trading regularly, Grasp does make a lot of sense. Yeah, I think it's, it is because it just adds the already ridiculous sustain that the champion does have. Uh, and I think that when you're going up against a bully matchup too, the, the, um, just everything that it provides, I think is, is really nice in the matchup. So I like it top lane. I think it's good. If you're going mid lane, um, I've seen caps from Fleet Footwork all the time. And <laughs> the excuse... <laughs> So I reached out to uh, G2 to ask them, can you tell me a little bit about why you're on Fleet Footwork? Yep. And the reply from Katz was, he's been in prison for a really long time, <laughs> so I wanted to give him some shoes. Um, <laughs> Caps, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we are jumping back into game. Uh, the issue should have been resolved. We did have some Tiek and gear replaced for Alfari. Uh, and we are only three minutes into game. So no major things have happened since uh, if you've only just joined us. Yeah, not as of yet. We'll jump on back on into the action. G2 up against Origin. Uh, first game of the second half of the split for both these teams. And Origin are coming off pretty high recently. You know, they played relatively well in the last few games. I think they've won the last four in a row. I don't think many people expect them to make it five, but you never know. Could be the first team to take down G2. Especially with the Z pick in the mid lane. If Nuketa can pop off, maybe, maybe they can do something. I mean, the thing about Zed is you've always got to remember he's really strong in side lane. Uh, and in theory, the only one that can match him is Wonder. And that's why I wanted to talk a little bit about Undraft was... Um, Having Wonder steal Nuke Duck's ult could be really funny um, because it's effectively like Zed versus Zed. Yeah, I've got my I've got my call for it lined up. <laughs> oh, perfect, great, because you might need it. I think we we'll have uh, to look at the moves, <laughs> look at the plays. Uh, it looks like that we have another pause yeah, coming, it's out coming out from, from Alfari. Alfari same again. issue, so uh, clearly something wrong. We have to make sure that Alfari can use his keyboard. I don't know what the actual problem is. I'm just going to assume that his keyboard has exploded. The keys are everywhere. He doesn't have the squiggly key that you really need in League of Legends. Betilled. You we learned what this was called the last yeah, time. Yeah, but I preferred the squiggly geek. <laughs> Squig didn't we call it the squiggly boy? Well, I what never called Why would I know? The squiggly boy. <laughs> I called it the squiggly geek. The squiggly one. You've also got the... Um, Okay, I'm not going to let us go down the rabbit hole. What am I doing? I was sitting there being like, let's have a look at the other keys that you have on a keyboard, shall we? And I don't know why, you know, when pauses, you're, you're looking for things to talk about. And for some reason, my brain went, you know what? I think the fans will really enjoy if you talk about what's on a keyboard, because no one knows what's on Wait, a keyboard. Wait, does anyone here want to learn what's on a keyboard from Vedius? No, they don't. Right, here we go, no, they, they don't. On, teach us what's on a keyboard. Give me so one more key. One my, more special the key. The only fun fact I have about keyboards, okay. and this is literally the only one, is that um, uh, on. Oh, no, I'm going to mess this up now. On <laughs> European. It's okay, no one's <laughs> listening. <laughs> it's your mind. On European keyboards, they put the app under the two, yep. whereas in the British ones, they put it next to the enter, Yeah, right? So American and European uh, is different as well. Yeah, yeah, so it's like, that's my fun fact for you. Thanks, crowd. I appreciate that. We're back into the game, so you don't have to listen to me talk about random stuff so anymore. I was Googling keyboard facts just in case. <laughs> Smithy jumps in and jumps out. <laughs> Easy enough escape for him down towards the bottom lane. But let's, let's talk a little bit about... 31 weird and fun facts about keyboards. <laughs> no, we're not talking about that. Talking about the game. Uh, Nuketuck versus Caps. Let's go. Medic, look, jungler. Oh, jungler is just waiting from the side. Caps. Flashes away, puts the Twin Fangs down as well, but Yankos ganking in the top lane, Alfari trying to get away, the Sonic Wave connects, flashes under the tower, almost locks up Yankos with the Mark of the Storm, does, but he's just out of tower range, cold on his way up, not really too much more going on as Mithy jumps in, Perk spell shoots it, Mithy maybe a little bit overexpended, the gleaming, the gleaming, <laughs> the gleaming quill, find your words, will man. heal Patrick back up, I'm just so surprised to see Rakan back on the field. So what we saw there were two ganks happen at the same time, cold ganked mid, while Yankos ganked top. 
The difference was Yankos used his flash to try and secure a kill onto Alfari, which means that he lost his flash in the process, whereas Cold and Nuke Duck expended nothing but got that summon spell out from Cap. So now when the level 6 mark comes round, there is a lot of potential for Nuke Duck to set up a kill and start that snowball going for the Zed. He's very close to that level spike, and uh, especially once Cold gets level 6, you think about it. The death mark, if it doesn't have enough damage, throw that ultimate, the Requiem, down, and that might just be enough to turn it into a solo kill. Nuke on his way towards that level 6. Cold still only 5, though, so it's going to be a little bit of time before we see that Karthus ultimate coming out. Mickey's he's done a good job of continuously engaging here in the bottom lane. Ignite comes out with perks. He flashes away. Mickey with the Ghost Water Dive as well. Uh, we'll just escape, but... Looking towards those level sixes, Cold, just around the corner here, there's Captain Yankos square up against him. Nuketuck just about to hit level six. Cold wants to keep him here because he wants to find this oh. kill. Dark Harvest stack ah, onto Nuketuck Cold. doesn't quite have it. Here it is. Now he has the six, but they won't be able to find this kill. It's a cannon wave, though, that Caps is going to lose here. So still experience put behind the G2 mid lane, and we wondered if Nuketuck could have a strong performance on this set, already taking a bit of an advantage. Let's appreciate right now that five or six minutes into the game, Nuke Duck or, uh, Origin already have a 1,000 gold lead over G2 Esports in the early game. The, the place where G2 have often been dominant, Origin are controlling the state of the map, right? It is a double klepto build from Origin here. I mean, so for sure. Obviously, for sure. you have to give them credit for getting the gold, but a lot of it is coming in that bottom lane, 300 gold difference, even though the CS is even. Top lane, it's about 50 CS, uh, 50 gold or so as well, the difference between the two teams. But mid, bigger advantage for Nuketuck, right? I mean, you're, you're definitely right, Medic. It's important to take into consideration, but the fact is, Origin right now, they're the ones applying the pressure. They have pressure in mids, they're trading very aggressively in bot, they even got the flash out from perks in the two versus two. Uh, and the only one that's really struggling right now is Alfari in this top lane matchup. You know, and I talked about how Alfari should have pressure. Ooh, ow, we have Death the flash in. Caps doesn't have the six. So much damage. Caps is dead. Look at the moves. Look at the plays, Venius. What was that? We talked about the level six mark for Nuke Duck. We said that he does have kill pressure. The biggest thing was that Caps was still only level five. He just gets back to lane. Oh, and our observer's already on the replay. Nuke Duck, he sees the level difference between them, and he's just waiting for an opportunity. He flashes in. He ults, Caps knows where he's going to land, so he's able to land the Q, but Nuke Duck gets yep. everything onto him. He lands literally every single skill, and he gets a, a perfect 100-0, 1v1 kill. Beautiful stuff from Nuke Duck. Didn't even really need the proc of the death mark to get that kill either. Nuke Duck in a very strong position, has that serrated Dirk now in the mid lane as well. And something we do have to highlight with Origin is how strong they have been in the last few weeks. Not only getting kills in the early game, but also managing not to die. Look at this, it's comparing six games in weeks one through three where they died 22 times at the 15 minute mark compared to their last three games where they've only died three. And you can see the difference in isolated deaths as well. They're not getting caught out as much. They're a lot more patient. They're a lot more aware of how to punish their opponents. And right now they sit with the goal lead. Now Yankos looking for a play up top. No flash on Alpha. He kicked back. There's a slicing mouse as well. Yankos taking over the tower. Counter slicing mouse from Wonder just steals the ultimate away from under him. Cold does have the Requiem, but I don't think it has quite enough damage to take down Wonder. So you're try for it. Looks like not. Wonder will also have his shield back up as well. Yanko's going for the loop-de-doop. <laughs> he loop-de-doops all his way around onto Cold. Doesn't have the kick, but will follow it up with the Sonic Wave. Cold flashes away underneath the tower. Yanko's still on the chase here. Wonder's going to push in the wave. And Yanko just needs to hit a Q. Hits it. There's the connection. Yanko's under the tower, though. He's done. A one-for-one -one trade under the top lane tower. Yanko's fine with this. He'll take the solo kill. He gets a lot of experience from that as well and he forces Cold back to the grave. No flash available on the Karthus. Let's have a look back at how this happens. The setup is great. Yankos plays this perfectly. Alfari wants to try and ulti as quick as possible, but he doesn't hand his ulti onto anyone because he just gets kicked out of it. Good patience there from G2 to wait, and then Wonder goes in with the cannon ultimate. And you think he's going to die at this point, but no. He still has the E to get out. He has a bit of a shield as well. And then here's the classic loop de doop coming out from Yankos. He comes in from behind. Uh, Cold just kind of face checks the brush. He's not expecting Yankos to be in there. He doesn't have any vision. And then Yankos just goes to the last, last kill. And the problem is his W's on a very long cooldown because he used it to Ward. If Wonder was a little bit closer, maybe he could have gone out to safety, but unfortunately, it ends up being a one for one. I don't think I could have cast a cursed origin any better than saying they haven't died that much. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them die. Still a thousand two hundred gold lead though for OG. Patrick sitting on a sheen. Hasn't actually gone for the tier yet. Must have had to back on a bit of an awkward amount of gold. Level six available available for both the origin bot laners. No level six on perks yet, but Mickey, Mickey does have his. 
Pike can be so impactful. We've seen how good Mickey is on the Pike as well just a couple of weeks ago. Caps now gets the blue. He's past that level six mark. Makes it a lot harder for Nuke Duck to get that one-on-one -on -one kill. Caps actually decided to go for the blasting one rather than the tier early on. Clearly he wants a little bit more damage during the laning phase. Wants to be able to harass. Um, Wonder trading very well. You know, so... Um, also, just coming back to this top lane matchup, because I talked earlier... Oh, never mind, we don't have time, Yank. The loop de dupe Yeah, it's another loop de dupe up top side. He has not been spotted by Alfari, but Alfari very aware. You know what? This guy could be here. Gonna play defensively. Just Alf be patient. Alfari does have the flash. No flash on Wonder. Hasn't stolen away the ultimate. Uh, Yankos also Alfari. has flash, though. Here goes Yankos. Look at the flash kick. Gets it straight away. Alfari trying to get away, but he can't escape from Wonder and Yankos. No need to burn the flash. Yankos gets his third kill of the game. And once again, the first blood king coming up big for G2. Hard camping around the top side of the map. Wonder's been playing this 1v1 extremely well, and now he's just getting constant jungle assistance to try and put Alfari behind. The Silas isn't actually getting any of the kills, though. It is Yankos securing them, but, you know, after the performance of Yankos recently, I think it's warranted. Oh, it definitely has had such a strong performance yesterday on the Elise. Teleport coming out from Alfari. Still has the flash. Rift held started as well by Yankos. Could do a loop de doop down across it towards this top lane if he wants, but instead, it looks like it's going to be Wonder just getting a bit of deep vision in. You can see Yankos, his early game across the course of the split has been impeccable. Yeah, uh, I said it yesterday, the, the return of the first Blood King. Uh, he definitely seems to be on track to his old school days. He, last year, he definitely had some mixed performances, but this year he has been very solid. Now we see the bot lane. Mickey gets the hook off, but there's the quickness. So much damage coming out from Patrick already. Mickey dead and perks. Just couldn't do anything to save his, AD, uh, save his support. Doesn't even have the heal on the Sivir. Patrick and Mithy winning out a pure 2v2 bot lane. And we heard Perks say yesterday that he thinks Patrick and Mithy have shown a lot of growth. Perks loves to play his former support, Mithy. Uh, and so far, they're winning out on this 2v2 against the pike lane. They will pick up two turret plates. Origins duo showing huge growth compared to the first time that these two met. Oh, definitely. Uh, worked their way through three turret plates overall in that bottom lane, giving them a, that meaty, meaty gold advantage. And across the board, Origin are putting up a strong fight here against G2. Would love to see Patrick and Mitty swap towards the top side now. Something that Ender talks a lot about is rather than try and siege for those last two plates, move up towards the top side and secure yourself six plates overall. Start threatening those plates as well. And Nuketuck has found Yankos. No flash, remember. There's the Requiem as He's well. Dead. No, no life for Yankos. He felt the pain of a Requiem there as Nuketuck gets the kill. Extremely quick from Nuke Duck. He probably didn't even need the Ignite. He didn't have to expend the Flash. They didn't need the Requiem as well, but Cold, he just wanted a bit of an assist. Overall, Nuke Duck looking strong. He might actually go into Caps here. I think he's going. And Mithy's there with the chase. Doesn't have the quickness. Dodges away. They both dodge out of it, but Caps still escapes with the Flash. Whew. The mechanical intensity in this game is absolutely top notch. Nuke Duck demonstrating why you always have to put him in the conversation for top mid in EU. And it's so great to see a Zed finding success as well. Now, there is Mickey lying in wait. As Mickey, Mickey's like, wait a minute, I just cleared a ward out. Why is there another ward there? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't able to spot out. Uh, looks like the Patrick will return towards the bot side of the map. Doesn't have teleport, whereas Perk still does. But Origin still sitting with a gold lead right now. Was Wonder really bullying out Alfari in this matchup? Yes, he did get a lot of jungle assistance, but looks like. Uh, Silas pretty strong in terms of the 1v1. No real surprise given the amount of sustain that he has. Yeah, because practicing his moonwalk skills in the top lane there as he puts down the Rift Hold. This should be the tower falling. We didn't see the swap that perhaps we would have liked, but Rift Hold used at the opportune moment here before those turret placings fall off. So you get the extra gold, they get the first Oof. tower in the top lane as well. Only just as I think uh, Patrick is going to push in the bottom lane in just a second. But here comes Mitty straight onto Caps, grounding onto Nuke Duck. Caps, not really many ways out of this one. Keeps getting underneath the tower though. And it looks like Nuketuck didn't want a flash for the final auto. So the Miasma from Caps there. Oh, we might not have time as Mickey spotting out Patrick. Patrick says he should be able to get out of range. So uh, no kill happens there. But in the mid lane, the Miasma from Caps stopped Nuketuck from being able to teleport to his other shadow. If he had gotten that last auto off, Caps almost certainly would have died. But you're right. He had the flash up medic. He decided not to use it. He thinks it's more valuable to keep it and just put pressure down onto Caps rather than securing a kill. As we move out of the laning phase, teams grouping up three, two men into a separate lane, trying to get rid of those first tier of turrets. It's about 600 gold difference between these two uh, goliaths, but 
I think a lot of people would have expected by this point in the game G2 to kind of be snowballing away from OHA. Yeah, and uh, a lot of credit has to go towards Patrick and Mithy. They've been playing extremely aggressively in the bot lane. You know, you can talk about how Kleptomancy helps them get a gold lead, but they are 1.5k gold ahead. That is because they have been finding two versus two kills. They have been pressuring the turret plates. They've been taking advantage of the fact no heal on perks, no defensive summoner spells means that they can just continue to play aggressively. And Mithy showcasing the Rakan still has value on the current patch. So you have to feel next steps for Origin, move that Zed into a side lane. Get him into one of those 1v1 matchups if you can. You've opened up the map a little bit more. You want to keep the pace of the game going. You want to keep getting that Zed fed because otherwise you are looking at a Casio and a Sivir in those late game team fights. Yeah, you certainly are. And uh, the thing for G2 is they still have a really strong side laner with Wonder. Level 11 on the Silas right now. He is continuing to push all the way up towards the tier 2 turret in the top lane. And Alfari definitely struggling in this situation. Uh, again, it doesn't help that Yankus has been top multiple times. But this is a lane that uh, G2 will constantly have pressure in. The one thing about Wonder is he's always been known as a solid split pusher. Even on his days in Spice, it was when he was able to play in a side lane that that team found so much success in the past. So G2 still in a solid position right now. The gold gap isn't out of control worthy yet. But the fact that Origin, 15 minutes into the game, still looking very good is definitely a positive for them. Definitely a second dragon as well on the cards here for Origin. It's only a cloud. Probably why G2 aren't contesting it too heavily, but with a mountain in their back pocket as well, that's just a little bit of a bonus. So, uh, thinking back to when the last time these two teams met, Origin actually had a very solid 2v2 bot lane because yep. they ran the Draven into the Zoe, Zoe. something or other. Yeah. Um, and they were actually doing really, I think it was Zoe Rakan that they played against too. And then it was about the 15 minute mark that they were doing really well. And then, all of a sudden, Patrick died in mids due to a Mickey engage, and then the Zoe, Jace, Carthus composition came online from G2, and Origin couldn't play the game. So I find it uh, quite entertaining that Origin actually first picked the Carthus uh, as, a, as an almost like a throwback to the first time that they met, and perhaps they will be able to find that first win against G2 like no one else has been able to do. Now, Wonder and Yankos, once again, have their eyes set on Alfari. They are determined to put him behind, but the rest of Origin looking to try and help out. I haven't really seen that huge impactful Requiem yet either from Cold. You know, he had that one when Yankos died, but it didn't actually even connect. Nope. He didn't get an assist. And I feel like you can kind of define a, a Karthus game by how many kills you get off the first few Requiems. You need to get that extra oh, damage coming out. Deathmark! Poe's going to survive. Mickey. Requiem, Requiem! Oh, Requiem! Is there a special death knot? Pressar says Cold gets the kill. And just as we were talking about it, Origin are able to capitalize. They get the mid lane tower here as well. Origin. Pull the trigger. That was Pop so good. So good from Nuke Duck and Patrick because just as the teleport comes through, Patrick uses his ulti to get that initial burst of damage. Nuke Duck immediately jumps on top of him and they know they have the Carthus ulti to help secure that kill as well. Uh, and it ends up securing another tower in favor of Origin. So this is what they were lacking in the past. They, were, they didn't have that ability to just make those plays, be willing to try and catch their opponents out. And right now, Origin, they have that confidence. They're making these plays. And again, we can see it. Note here, the teleport. The fairly defensive teleport. Nothing too crazy, but Patrick gets that. Uh, the ultimate. Then immediate teleport back to the shadow from Nuke Duck. He uses his ulti. Good interrupt from Mickey to keep his AD carry alive. But unfortunately, he can't do anything to help save him from the Requiem. So Perks, definitely being put behind in this game. I think you have to put Origin up there with the most improved team so far this split, considering how dominated they were in week one. It was a 27-minute game. They lost by 12,000 gold in only 27 minutes. Now, putting G2 to the sword, you know, they have a 2,000 gold lead at the, almost the 20-minute mark. They're looking very strong. They do have some scaling on their team, even if we talk about the strength of Cassio Sibir late game. You've still got an Ezreal. You've still got a Karthus. You still have the team fight presence of a Rakan and a Kennen. <laughs> <laughs> like, although Mickey like, can, Haha, uh, I've got you. Taste my blade. Um, it's a skewer, actually. All right. <laughs> is a blade not? Does a skewer not encompass a blade? I don't well? know. When you have chicken saute, do you think this is a blade that you're eating up? What is a chicken saute? <laughs> okay, can kidding. we get a quick shot here? To <laughs> <with this laughs> it's like chickens on a on a skewer. Oh, chickens on a skewer. Yeah. I see. I do you not just simply call that skewered chicken. No. <laughs> No, you do not, Pettyus. Oh. 
interesting. Let's come back to League of Legends. Very well. Because you know quite a lot about that. I do. That's pretty much my only I, field. <laughs> see, the problem was, I looked at you and thought of your cousin Sheffius. And I'm like, oh, he'll know that a lot was about your chicken mistake. Chef, he does. Yeah. yeah, he's the cook in the family. Um, you only have one. <laughs> uh, oh. That's because oh, uh, <laughs> I looked. Okay, both so of us had exactly the same I, thought. I, I, like, I knew wait. that he had the ultimate, and so, so I was just like, "Why has he used it right now?" But oh, that's, that's what yeah. you thought. I, I was like, I, yeah, wait, I was wait, is this a visual bug?" No, I was. I was aware that Wonder had stolen the ultimate away. So yes. I was trying to work out why he'd used it, and obviously he just wants to switch that ultimate up for something else pretty soon. So uh, oh, there's probably a time limit on it as well. Yeah. That's why I would imagine. So we just threw it out for a bit of extra damage, and yeah, that's fine. Anyway, back to League of Legends. We're approaching the 20 minute mark, and I think this is the biggest deficit that G2 has ever been in at the 20 minute mark. Um, and the game still feels kind of even. I mean, it is kind of even. Still. I mean, it is, it is. But like, when you kind of look at the gold, you look at the amount of control that G2, uh, the OG have on the map, then you kind of expect them to be in priority. And right now, the only reason they don't have that much vision is because uh, the rest of Origin just reset. So they'll now push out their ways. They'll look to clear through the river around Baron. Yeah. And, uh, they may even look to try and steal away some of these uh, jungle camps. But I think a big question you have to ask yourself when you come towards this, you know, 20 minute mark when those first tier of towers are down and people are looking at two items or so is how did teams translate the early game leads they got into this two item portion of the game? Because Jankos got three kills pretty early on in this matchup. You've got a big wonder as well, but I haven't really seen them do a huge amount with that. Whereas I look at Nuke Duck as he got that early kill and they've been able to force down that mid tower. They've been catching people out. It feels like Origin just a little bit more on the front foot. Yeah, but oh, hang on one sec, because Caps is being sneaky snick right now. Don't step on him. Will he get spotted out? You can see the Karthus and Ezra also moving down. 1v2 here for Nuke Duck. Edge of Night. Nuke Duck dodges away. Great stuff from him. There's the teleport as well, though. G2 maybe looking for the fight as Wonder comes in, steals away the. Death Mark, but Wonder now caught off. Death Mark's on to Nuke Duck. Patrick here for the chase. The Miasma comes down. Nuke Duck pulled back. Somehow survives for a very long time, but eventually goes down to Wonder. That's a shutdown. Patrick gets a counter kill, though. Tower goes down in the top lane as Jankos keeps pushing it. So this is the bit that I wanted to mention just before the fight happened. You talk about how you haven't really seen much of Wonder's impact, but it's been very subtle. He's been chipping away at these towers in the two side lanes, and he'd actually taken a lot of HP from that tier two in the top lane. And that means that Jankos wasn't in a position to help collapse down towards the bot side. So instead, he just pushed top. So while it looks like a one for one kill overall, G2 get themselves a turret. OG secured their third Drake of the game. And again, overall, it's a fairly even exchange, but OG, they're being pushed back a little bit in terms of topside control. Infernal Dragon for Origin is pretty good though, and I do just want to bring attention to the AD carry itemization after this replay because we are going to see Nuke Duck be very slippery for a long time here. So he uh, pops the Edge of Night very early on, but because he's still standing on the Miasma, he gets uh, he takes a lot of damage. Alfari, he doesn't. He does have ultimate, but he decides not to use it because he's worried about a, a bigger ensuing fight. And then the Miasma positioning there as well was really good because it meant that uh, Nuke Duck couldn't flash out of that situation, meaning it made it easier for Mickey to land the hook to help secure that kill. So they did end up training a one for one, very solid. But now you'll see Zonya's coming out from Wonder. Zonya's now completed for caps. Spell shield onto perks, but they're looking for caps once again. Quickness straight on towards Wonder. He pops the slicing mask from there's the Zonya's as well, but the Ignite is taken away, and Patrick will not quite hit the Mystic Shot, but eventually gets the auto attack in. And Another kill for the AD carry on the side of Origin. Nuke Duck jumping in onto Yanko. Deathmark to follow him across the wall. There's the Requiem as well. Two quick kills for Origin. They turn their eyes straight towards the Baron. Yep, they have five members alive. G2 do have push in the mid lane though. But Origin, they don't care. They're just going to run the risk. They Remember, they're a very squishy team, but they're going to look to take this very, very quickly. Slicing Maelstrom still up for Alfari. Has got the flash as well. He's in this flank position. You can see him just down towards the bottom of your screen as Cap steps forward, looking to see perhaps if they can steal away the Nash. And Mickey going in as well. He almost gets it with the Ottoman, but can't quite. Smack comes out. Tower goes down in the mid lane. And Origin will settle with the Nasher, and it looks like they're gonna give up this mid lane tower. Perks on the push, Alfari isn't gonna go for the fight, but Mithy now not in the best of positions. On the home was popped by Perks, Mithy caught out, goes golden, but there's no real way for him to go. Caught up with the Phantom Undertow, and Caps will get the kill. Yeah, misplay there from Mithy, he didn't back with the rest of his team, and he ends up getting caught out by Caps. So at the very least, G2 take one Baron off the table, but OG, they still secure a massive objective, and they find a good couple kills onto G2. So here we have uh, Wonder isolated in the middle lane. He overextends with no defensive tower to keep him alive, which means that he ends up getting picked off. Um, then Origin continue the pressure because they just want to get some vision in the enemy jungle and they find Yankos, good use of the ultimate there from Nuke Duck to chase him down, ends up finding another kill and then they make their way back towards the Baron. So G2, they trade it for a mid-tier one. 
Pokes has actually been keeping up in farm, and you'll notice that he even has a gold bounty and is still relevant in this game as he has completed two items. But uh, they are overall still behind. So I say still behind, like the Gowl gap is only 1.5k. It's about a thousand gold between the two AD carries as well. We are seeing the double tier build from Patrick. It's what we usually expect to see on Ezreal's now. It gives you a huge amount of damage output in these later game team fights. And I almost have, I almost feel like I'm in a dream state at the moment because it's been a very long time since we've seen any team really push G2 this far. Like 15 minutes they've been even, 20 minutes sometimes it's been even, but coming up to the 25 minute mark and have a team ahead against G2 seems very surprising. Yeah, uh, but Perk said it himself, he thinks the Origin have shown a lot of improvement and that if anyone could challenge them, it would be them. And you know, one of the things I said in the, uh, earlier in the day was consistency is something we've been looking for a lot from our teams in Europe right now because a lot of the middle of the pack seem to be a little unreliable. But Origin has been the team that's steadily been improving week on week. And now they're actually challenging the first place team. They have the Baron buff, they're sieging onto the mid tier two. They now lead with four towers to three. And G2 have been pushed harder than any other team has been able to push them so far this split. We have to see if they can play from behind against Origin. 25 minutes in, two and a half item Karthus, almost a three item uh, Zed as well. But you are getting to that point where the Cassiopeia and the Sivir are truly online. You're looking at Essence, Reaper, Rapid, Fire, Cannon for Perks, could go towards the Infinity Edge next. Yeah, Inferno Drake is spawning in about 50 seconds as well. Those will be pretty important. <laughs> Look at these up and down spikes. It's, it's just the difference in when G2 is getting a tower and then when Origin is getting a tower and uh, when that and those small, small objectives swing. are dropping, yep. Um, but I also want to take note of some of the items that have been completed, because... Tell me, sure, Vedius. The Ezreal is at three items now, yep. and he's working towards completing the Archangel Staff. Once that's done, Ezreal's kind of like at a really, really strong point. Uh, he does so much damage, especially in combination with his W. Um, the Black Cleaver has been completed for Nuke Duck, so he has a little bit more survivability. Um, I'm surprised he didn't go Dusk Blade, but clearly he wants that armor shred. He wants the extra cooldown reduction from the item as well. I believe he is sitting on about 40% right now. Uh, he's at 45%, in fact. So he's going to be very mobile. And now he's level 16. I think that's the highest level in the game. It is. And uh, he's going to be a massive threat off in a side lane that only Wonder can really deal with. And you're going to have to have uh, some big outplays in order to, to beat him. So, oh, Silas with his head is actually really exciting. So the Baron buff does just wear out. About 2,000 gold picked up for Origin off that. But no inhibitor towers broken. G2 still able to defend their base uh, for the time being. You can see G2 trying to set up down towards this red side jungle. But Nuke Duck is here. Infernal Drake goes over to Origin. Second of the game for them. A 17% AD and AP. Only going to buff up Nuke Duck as he looks forward for Wonder. Uh, Barbie has the flank position here. Going over the side to Master straight away. That's the quickness as well. Already the first one. The Red Queen comes out. Forces Yankos away. And Wonder's going to shortly follow. Great stuff from Origin as they collapse under the tower. No hesitation, Origin just group up. They see three members bot immediately punish. Another tower goes towards them as they now extend their goal lead to 4k. Baron spawns in about a minute and a half and Origin are not taking their foot off the pedal. G2 on the back foot for the first time in a long time, you have to feel maybe the first time in, L in the LEC. But Origin are playing out of their skins. Like It's been coming. There's been a silent storm brewing in the Origin ranks, winning four of their last four games, but the decisiveness to do something like this is exemplary. But just look at how this composition works as well, because you think you have to be afraid of Zed killing a single target, but then you have a cannon diving onto your backline, combined with a Rakan diving onto your backline, and then if that doesn't kill you, there's a Karthus ultimate there as well, and then the Zed is just looking for a target to either clean up or just execute. And I just love this composition from Origin, because it didn't rely on getting ahead in the early game, even though it did, whereas G2 comp is so like sure they have good scaling in the sense of Sivir and uh, Cassio but again they have no reliable frontline as Nuketuk has found Perks. Jumps into Perks. Perks flashes the wall. The death mark comes out. Nuketuk can just jump back. He waited for Mickey to use the bone skewer and then jumps away. Cold here in the side of the fight as well. Patrick joins him up. Cannon's all the way down towards the bottom side. Afari does have the teleport if he wants to join this fray but just forces G2 away. Perks now with no flash. Remember the last time you got played Zed on our stage, it was against Perks. He beat him then. Perks has switched roles since, but still, it looks like Nuke Duck is the one to come out on top. Well, they still have to end the game. Baron spawns in 10 seconds. The only vision that G2 have in the river 
is that scuttle crab and you can see they've been able to maintain some control around the uh, the blue buff but for the time being origin are the ones dictating the pace g2 they just want to get close enough to that baron it's difficult though look at the level difference between the two junglers oh look at the damage onto mickey as well Trisha barrage oh just to the side of the pike man and mickey will retreat gets a lot of his health back of course with that passive but they forced him away and now origin will turn it back towards that nasher and that's it no more vision around the river og just going to start this one up oh, oh they are they give the illusion of starting this one up G2 walking into darkness, put the fast set observation. They'll spot out Cold and Mithy, but now you don't know what's going on, G2 at all. They're going to step forward. Zed on the flank as well. Nuke Dog just waiting in the wings, waiting for his opportune moment to strike into caps, and G2 will push out this mid lane. Perks stepping just a little bit too far forward, maybe. Mickey takes a lot of damage from Patrick. Once again, clearing out the way, but the mid priority now in favor of G2. Perks, you're all by yourself. You don't have flash, Perks! What are you doing, man? Just caught out! Origin just collapsed on the G2 bot laner. And Perks was in no man's land. Big fumble there from the AD carry from G2 as he loses his life. One of the best damage dealing opportunities they have to turn a Baron fight in their favor is now gone. As Origin sit with a numbers advantage, they make their way back towards the Baron, but Caps still has something to say about it. Still got a huge amount of damage on that Cassiopeia. Baron in the sights of Origin. You have to feel the Nash of their target. No vision here for G2. If we toggle it now, you'll see that G2 are walking into darkness. They pop down the far side alteration, but yeah. Yankos stepping into the bush, there's the Deathmark, trying to take out the jungle. Yankos only level 15, New Duck takes a lot of damage, jumps back, jumps forth. Yankos ignite ticking, but the same guy will keep him alive. The Baron goes down, Cole gets it, and now New Duck's running way up towards the top side. Caps jumped in, he's down, and Wonder had to escape the Requiem, calling down the prayers of God onto the face of Yankos. And finally, the G2 jungler feels the hell that is a Requiem. And Origin secure their second Baron of the game. They also find two kills onto G2. Perks is still alive for potential wave clear, but Origin can continue to interrupt the backs of G2. They want to break into the base right now. They've got two waves pushing in. You can see Nuke Duck off towards the top side. Ojin pushing in with Patrick, Mithy, and Alfari in the mid as well. Perks back up to try and defend. Wonder has the flank position here. Steals away the slicing master. Maybe this is the chance because those ricochets are going to do a lot of damage from Perks. Here we go. The on the hunt. You can see Wanda just stunned up by Alfari. Nuke Duck gets a tower in the top side as well. Inhibitor not broken, but the tower is down. But look, Ping's coming out from G2 right now. They have potential flanking wards but they're not going to take advantage of them. G-O-G go back to base. They extend the gold lead to 9,000. 9,000! Look at how much they've gotten off this Baron buff as well. Origin looking so good. The death cap has now been completed for cold. The Blade of the Ruin King working towards rounding out that build for the Ezreal. Nuke Duck level 18 on the Zed. Mortal Reminder done as well. Origin taking the 9-0 team to the brink and options look limited right now for G2. Origin have to make a huge misstep for G2 to come back into this game. And Here Nuke Duck, he is go. on the hunt. He's found Perks. Perks. Perks found once again. No flash on the AD carry. Perks is down. Nuke Duck doesn't even have to pop the ultimate. And now Mickey steps forward, but the ultimate dodges away from it. The death mark. Nuke Duck dodging around. Back. He's out of there. He's gone. As are G2's hopes of winning this game. Cold goes unstoppable. And you can see Patrick pushing in the mid lane. Looking for the inhibitor. G2 very much on the ropes. Perks and Wonder are unavailable to interfere with OGs. They push into the base. That is the first inhibitor down. Origin looking to take down the undefeated. Defeated G2 Esports. Here they go. The Nexus turrets, their target. The first team in the LEC to take G2 all the way. Caps so low. Patrick pops the ultimate, but Caps has to dodge away from it. The Nexus towers are down. Origin on the cusp of history as they take down the undefeated. Origin will defeat G2. Happy faces across the board as Origin do what no one in the LEC has been able to do so far. They stop the 18 and zero, they get in the way of G2 smashing those records, and they prove to anyone, everyone that they are a top contender here in Europe. Great performance all round from Origin. G2 taking their first defeat of the LEC. Knocked back in their haunches a little bit. Of course, as a team, I'm sure they will come back stronger. Not one of those huge defeats that will totally rock Who Wasn't expecting this today. Just 30 minutes ago, we were talking about keys on the keyboard, Medius. Yep. And 30 minutes later, we get to see Origin take down G2. And, and the... 
And it was the way in which they did it as well. Not only, not only did Nuke Duck have a fantastic performance against Caps, kind of like his biggest rival, really, yep. since in the summer of last year, it was those two meeting in the final, and Caps got the better of him then, taking the series 3-1. Now, during the regular season, Nuke Tuck really trying to solidify himself as the top mid in Europe with Pokes moving out the way. A convincing game like you had today is definitely a step in the right direction, but at the same time, the duo, the bot lane, the, yep. the, the Patrick and Mithy that were dying 2v2 in lane, the, the big weak point of the team, were finding 2v2 kills against Perks and Mickey. Yep. And like, you have nothing but positive things to say. And Alfari, he just, he had to tank ganks. He couldn't have a great game because he was the focus from the side of OG. But he mitigated what he could. He was still valuable in these later game team fights. And like Origin, it was just such solid play. I think if you're G2, you wonder maybe you were a little bit too flexible in your draft with the Silas pick. We haven't seen it work out too much at all in Europe yet. Maybe that's because it hasn't been in the hands of someone like Wonder or someone like Caps before. But even this game, Wonder had a couple of ultimates that were impactful, but didn't really take over the game with that. So side. I don't want to go too much into like Silas, because no, I definitely I think that they played around that lane and its role in the composition is something we can explore, explore over the next few weeks. We I'm not a massive fan of the pick personally. What I think is just a bigger deal is the fact that the bot lane, they struggled. They yeah, fell they behind. They lost, right? And I mean, the fact that they were, uh, the OG bot lane was able to build that lead. They played, that like, you didn't see huge ganks from the Karthus, right? It was just 2v2 winning bot and mid lane winning. Yep. And that's the biggest thing for me to take away from this origin victory. G2 were not able to cement themselves as titans over everyone in the league. Origin said, we can match you, we can challenge you, you know what, we can beat you. And that's exactly what they did. That it is. Before we close out the week, there's one more important battle remaining for Kia player of the game between Nuke Duck, Patrick and Mithy. Oh, that's a close one. It's a tough one. Go to our Lolly Sports on Twitter and vote. Um, yeah, that's a really tough one, actually. Because Mithy had some great engages. I thought this was one of the best laning phases I think we've seen from him all split. And it's on Rakan, who is just not good at the moment. Yeah, he's a lot weaker right now. He did get caught out by Caps after yeah, the ban. That's true. But then also Nuke Duck, he was massive on the Zed. He was finding pick after pick after pick. And then Patrick was just... Uh, it's, it's definitely a tough one to call. Good luck with that one. I think in honor of Deficio, we'll call it the year of the duck. And we're going to send it over to Law, who's with the duck, to see what it feels like to take down G2. Thank you very much, guys. And thank you for joining me on stage. I mean, Perks was talking about it yesterday, how you could be the team who finally could take them down. What does it mean to you to finally get it? Um, it's really reassuring for us that, you know, we are a good team with just a bad start. But... I was not like scared or, or frightened that we would lose against G2. I was I was really confident going into the game. So it's uh, it's it's of course fun to beat the best team, but yeah, I was I was kind of expecting it. I mean, even the, expecting it really. Yeah, I always expect to. Win. <laughs> even the casters were mentioning how you play less safe and try and take more risks now. How do you explain this? Uh, yeah, because uh, I saw that. The mid laners that are the best in the world, they, they make a lot of plays and they, they create a lot of you know pressure for the team like that. So I've been trying, you know, the last year to play, you know, more aggressive, make sure I play like always to the limit. So yeah. You know, one thing that I found interesting was the Z pick, considering how long it was since you played it. Why today, especially against Caps? Uh, I mean, we just, it was kind of like a bit of a draft mistake at first because we had like so much AP uh -huh. and they banned, you know, the Jace, the Lelouche and Yasuo. So we needed, you know, some physical. Uh, so I was thinking like, okay, I could go for, you know, Sion mid, but, but like, I, I thought Zed can be good that game. They didn't have too much CC and the lane matchup is, is like, it's laneable, so yeah. All right, it worked really well in the end. Thank you very much for joining me and congrats, obviously, on this one. And to wrap up the day and this week, let's send you back to PGL.